What do you get when you have two microphones, a bottle of bourbon, and plenty of time to kill? It's the Bourbon Talking Podcast with Billy and Jimmy. Glad you found us. Sit back, relax. Let's see what we get into. Where am I? Indigestion. Eat that sandwich too fast, didn't you? Yeah, fuck. Eat too much. You eat the whole 12 inches? Fuck yeah. <laughs> I, I couldn't really. I'd, I, I couldn't even eat the whole thing. Oh, fuck. I Kill him. Murder. It's the Bourbon Talking Podcast, episode <laughs> 50. We're Whoa. back. And no yeah. black balloons. Yeah. Laura said she was getting us some black balloons, but she never got us any balloons. So. No, but wait, I think you told her like midnight last night. Well, plenty of notice. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. I'm Billy. And this is Jimmy. And we're going to drink some bourbon today and rate it at the end for you guys and talk a bunch of hogwash in between. Jimmy, what we got going on today? Well, we're going to be uh, drinking something that hopefully cures you. Got a little uh, Doc Swenson here. Oh, Doc Swenson. Doc Swenson. Just so, what the doctor ordered. Well, yeah, and so hopefully uh, whatever ails you is better by the time you get through with this whole bottle. Well, I got a long list of ailments, so let's get, get the magic yeah. potion in us. Who needs the, the VA when you got Doc Swenson here, right? Well, it pours well. Well, it comes out the hole. comes out the hole. <laughs> That's a nice... You know what? I always start off my bourbon journey by... By how it looks, and this is a, a dandy looking bottle. It's not a yeah. It's a nice looking bottle. <laughs> it's it a, is. It's a dandy. It looking is a dandy. Bottle. If you look at it, it is different from your oh, normal God. off the random. I would say that these guys make their own gla- on their own bottles. I don't know if that actually is true or not, but so let me get this right. So. You're getting all dressed up to go out and have dinner, and Terry comes out and says, hey, how's my dress? You go, oh, it looks dandy. That's a dandy dress. Yep. <laughs> yep. Oh. All right. So this is a 47.9%, 95.8 proof. Um, release. Oh, this is vintage. This is, this is 2022. Vintage. It is. This is. Aged on the uh, shelf and in the barrel. Wow. Bottle, bottle number 1048. Thanks, Doc. We're going to give this a shot, and we'll let you know what we think. And after that, you can go buy a bottle of your own if you like, because we're not sharing ours. This is ours. Go get your own damn bottle. I mean, look at all, all right. the partial bottles. Got a partial bottle up there, partial bottle. We don't, like, finish these bottles. Yeah, they get finished. <laughs> Just on our own time. But. On our own time. So, uh, all, right. all right, Billy, let's Don't see how this stuff. Uh, Going in for the first, prepare yeah. yourselves. Hey, by the way, John, I'm still drinking out of the glass you gave me. I um, ran out uh, of the house. And Billy forgot his again. Forgot my, John. John, yeah. John, I'm going to bring that glass, I promise. I use it at home. <laughs> I think it just went down the wrong hole. Hang on. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <clears throat> All right, that's some fire water. <laughs> yeah, stick around to the end. We'll give you our taking great on this. We'll rate this at the end. <clears throat> we'll rate this at the end. All right, gain your freaking composure, Billy. Please do not read into this pre-swig. Yeah, I might have, you know, had a fly in my mouth or something. (laughs) I'm just still trying to figure out the definition of dandy. (laughs) Doc Swenson sarsaparilla. All right. All right. (laughs) Okay. Feel better now? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm here. All right. All right. What you got for us today, Jimmy? What's the first topic of discussion for us today? Well, you know, kind of good for the uh, the 49ers to have a big comeback, you know, 
win on the, the Lions on Sunday. So, hey, he, you know. Come on, Lions. Kick some field goals. Don't be scared. You would have won. I know. Two, you, instead God of fourth, and, you went for twice on fourth down, and if you just kicked two field goals, you would have won. Man. Anyways, but. That was a, uh, I was, I was rooting for the lions. That didn't work out like I thought. <clears throat> yep, yeah. So both those games went the, went the opposite way. That's why I don't gamble. Exactly. <laughs> I test myself every once in a while when I start to think I'm going to bet on something. I pretend to bet. I go, nope, would have lost that money. See? So an interesting fact, I mean, Hey, and you know, hats off to the 49ers and, you know, Brock Purdy, Mr. Irrelevant. I mean, he played 60 minutes. But did you know that he went to Alabama and uh, tried out for Nick Saban in the Crimson Tide? No. Yeah. I didn't know he did that. So Saban, here's his take. Here's his assessment when Brock Purdy came to Alabama. What did Nick Saban think about Glock Purdy? Uh, that he was short, as in stature. A- average, yeah, that he was yeah, short, average, and his arm was whatever. But he did offer Brock Purdy a partial scholarship. Would it be on a practice squad or something? Yeah, who, who knows? But a, I yeah. mean, I mean, even a partial is actually you know pretty good from you know, mean, Nick yeah. Saban. I mean, he saw right. something there, but he just didn't admit it. But he, he was average height, arm is so so, and accuracy was. And you know average. what Nick Saban said last week? Huh, I was wrong. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, but, but he opted and went to Iowa State. Yeah. You know, so and he played for Iowa State. But again, you know, Nick Nick Saban. So yeah, Mister Quarterback Guru himself, Nick Saban, isn't all shout that. Out, shout out to Iowa State Cyclones. Yeah, hey Iowa Nep- State man, hey nephew. Your school there took him on so i just thought i just saw the article uh yesterday and thought hey you know that's actually pretty cool saving got it wrong <laughs> well, yeah i'm sure you know if you was to sit down with him he'd tell you that he's got a lot of things wrong in his life got a lot right too yeah but, money's yeah. not one of them yeah but uh yeah he, he uh didn't see that one coming but you know oh well but again, you put the the, the right all the person talent, in the right situation, it works. All the talent is not in these kids. Mm-mm. They're a ball of clay. And it takes the right coach, the mm-hmm. right person to mold that person into the athlete that they have the potential to be. I agree with that. And Saban probably saw that pile of clay and went, eh, take a lot of carving, you know? But there, yeah. somebody else saw him and said, all right, we're going to put some time and effort into this cat and make him history relevant. I mean, and go back to Alex Smith. When he came out of Utah, he went to San Francisco, and they did not really use Alex Smith's talents. And he was horrible in San Francisco. Yeah. They weren't building schemes around him. You know, he, they were trying to force Alex Smith into their system instead of trying to build a system around Alex Smith. Right, which there's benefits, pros, and cons to both of those. Yeah, so, yeah. but Alex Smith goes on to Washington and... Different environment. You know, Kansas City, and wow, he, he lights it up, does well, and, and there comes our Here comes supervisor. our head engineer, Bruce, into the... <laughs> so, yeah, so, oh, you're be doing a podcast. The lights and the power to go out. <laughs> you're doing a podcast without me. I don't think so. <laughs> but yeah, uh, again... You know, it, it takes a visionary to to see into the future and to see into that ball of clay. And you've got to have the right talent around you to feel that, okay, we can we got a future here with this kid. Or there's some lower hanging fruit that's easier to to manifest on this side. You know, you make your decisions when you're when you're going through that, I guess. But uh I don't know. I'm I'm not in the coaching world, so I'm just in the screaming at the TV world. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 
That was a dummy. Why did you pick that bomb? You know, so was, exactly. <laughs> that guy couldn't throw a rock in right. the broad type of a barn from the inside. Yeah, I can do that. So, anyways. No, that was it. I just thought it was an interesting take on Nick Saban's uh, yeah. assessment of Brock Purdy. Who, I hadn't heard that story. So who that was every weird. tight, average accuracy, yeah. and uh, his arm was whatever. I'm like, really? Patrick Mahomes got uh, drafted kind of whatever, too. So, Yeah, they saw potential in him. He was still in the first round. Yeah. <laughs> Brock Purdy yeah. was not. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what else you got, buddy? Where are you at, Bruce? I don't trust you. Well, we can just, uh, you know – our condolences to the families of the the three uh, Army military personnel that were killed in Jordan. So with that, I mean, again, condolences to the family. And uh, these these guys are, are heroes and, you know, thoughts and prayers to all. And why hasn't? The U.S. responded. We kept saying, don't. We will at our time and choosing and how we want to do it. So that's just there. And I get it. They can't say, hey, on Saturday night, we're going to bomb the shit out of this one. I I realize that. You know what? Say, so, you know but, what? How, how come we can't say, hey, on Saturday night, we're just going to blow these targets out of the water, but we actually do it on Friday night? Or. 48 hours prior to that, like yeah. say, Hey, in five days, we're going to blow this up, but already have the planes in the air. Oh, we lied. Sorry. Well, I mean, how about <laughs> we say we're going to do yeah. it and we never did. And they've already scrambled and right. moved everything. And yeah. well, I mean, it takes centuries for them to set it back up. You've been, I, I, you've I been a part it. of military operations. You understand the why you can't do that, but you know, yeah, I get it. I, I, I'd troll them. Yeah. I put up a big Google location of where the bomb's going to hit in 72 hours this part will be a parking lot and then as soon as you turn around the podium and start walking down the hallway it gets smolten oops sorry i lied well yeah exactly i forgot to calculate the time change sorry <laughs> oh, this this tape was pre-recorded five days ago <laughs> yes oops sorry about that yeah so anyways you know but uh, again yeah, you know, and you see where uh, today um, Biden's going to Ohio. Uh, uh, oh, for the train derailment. He just yeah. found out about it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, tr a train derail? Well, I mean, he, he probably thought he was going to. Well, carry my ice cream, was it? <laughs> he, he probably thought he was going to talk to the Palestinians, not East Palestine and Ohio. And yeah, he thought he, he was going to go and fix this war, right? He's going to get off the plane. This place looks lot like Idaho. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Y'all don't have it so bad over here like I thought you did. And so when he gets in Ohio, this don't look like the Middle East. This is pretty nice. You got grass. <laughs> uh, we jest. This is this is a comedy channel, so you know it's all this. Not, is, yeah. No, this is sad. This yeah. is our sad story hour, and you know, again, now he'll probably you know, a year after the fact. I mean, in the mayor of uh, uh, Palis um, Palestine, it's, you know, he's like, "Why are you coming here? Every there's nothing to see here now." It's like, really? Well, yeah. yeah, it's all so, it's all being cleaned up. Yeah, so, I mean, it'd be like, uh, you know, Joe Biden saying, you know what, I'm going to go to Miami and, uh, you know, see what the damage did from uh, Hurricane Andrew. Yeah, I, I, the the news cycle so quick. You know, they say we, we live on a 10-hour news cycle. So what is a problem today? What's news today? 10 hours later, pss, it's gone. Now, the train derailment did stick around for a while. Mm -hmm. And months later... You'd still see a report here and there. Somebody would go out and throw a rock into a creek, and you could see the sheen come up right. with all the chemicals, you know. Um, but I would like it a, an investigative reporter to go out and do, how how long has it has it been? Twelve months. February third, I believe, is the. Uh, it's been a year. It's been a year. 
Oh, wow. I was thinking it had been about seven or eight months. Okay. So, so it's, it's 12. Been, now would be a good time to go back out there and do another report, do another Test environmental. Test the water and everything, yeah. Yeah, and because there's people that have a lot of problems from that. Well, I mean, I think he needs to go and, you know, get and check out Miami and see what kind of, you know, damage is left over from Andrew. I mean, what's the difference? Good point. You know, how about Katrina? I mean, it, there's actually still issues from Katrina. I mean, you can go and solve that problem. But, no, he don't want to. So here, here's the problem with Biden. Just one? Oh, there's many. But you put them where he has to do uh, an on-the-spot speaking engagement, he can't do it. He doesn't go to the border because he's going to get hounded by reporters. Hey, asking questions. Unless it's pre-written, they won't send them. Then they probably think after 12 months and after the train wreck in Ohio that he can't really say much about it, you know? So, I mean, again, he cannot speak. I think the guy is literally incoherent what's going on around the world can't speak to anything and i don't know i i just they don't want to put him in a stressful situation when he put him in a stress yeah. such as ohio or the border he freaks i don't no, think he can only, string together two sentences i don't think he's going to be part of the three soldiers coming back to georgia from no Jordan either. I don't think he's going to be there for that. Were you? Um, I mean, is he going to go to Dover when they come home? I was told no. See, that's what why I, are you not at Dover? Right. See, and that's why he, yeah, he needs to go away. Were you on Congressman Aaron Bean's uh, town hall last night? I was. You were? I, w I was, too. I sat through it. Yep. What do you think about it? Pretty good, huh? Yeah, this is uh, the third or fourth one I've sat through. Yeah, this is the first one I sat through, and I I'll probably won't miss another one. It was really good. I like how they did that. But you know, I will, I will, I will say that this is probably the first one that he didn't get any negative feedback because usually there's some people on there too saying, "Why are you doing this?" I mean, yeah, there's some you know, and there's some people that don't always agree with his politics, but. You know, for the most part, you know, he, he kind of gets everybody's input, does polls and stuff like yeah. that. But how, how that was ran and handled was that was top notch. That was pretty cool. No, it was pretty good. Very I, interactive. Yeah. And yep. yeah, that was pretty neat. No, it was a good podcast or good town hall. And yeah. no, I mean, I, I mean, hats off. He's actually got his constituents involved and engaged, which is, you know, and yep. he even got to hear from Texas. So yep, yeah, Texas. shout out to Representative Aaron Bean for that last night. That was. Really, uh, really cool to be uh, uh, be in on. Want to see more of those? So yeah, yeah, he does those uh, monthly. They are pretty good. Yeah, that was cool. So what do you got going on over there? Um, I got a few things. Let's see. All right, so I, I just watched this really interesting documentary about a week or two ago. It's called, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's called Gold Lies and Videotapes. It's the story of a guy named Doc Noss, and he lives uh, just right near White Sands Missile Range. So there's a, a mountain peak. He used to go out, go hunting and, you know, stuff all the time. This is back in the 50s and the 60s. He'd go missing all the time up to this place called Victorio Peak. It's in the Hembrillo Basin there in New Mexico. Well, Doc started coming home with like all these trinkets, like bars of gold and a crown with like 16 stones and a big ruby in it. And Sounds it, like uh, Bob Menendez's uh, <laughs> mattress at home. Yeah, he, he found Bob Menendez's pillowcase. Anyway, <laughs> 
the problem with this whole story is Doc and his wife, they love to talk. So I know if I would have found a mountain filled full of gold, I would tell maybe one dude. I wouldn't tell nobody. <laughs> so, yeah. But anyway, his wife loved to talk. So throughout this documentary, they even talked to, um, so Doc found this crown, and he went and had it appraised. And they even talked to the appraiser who verified, yeah, he, he brought a crown, and, you know, the theory is that this gold uh, was was part of like from uh, Mexico, and that it had been hidden inside this this mountain peak is fairly small, but it has a, a natural fault right through it, and it was cracked. There's an entrance hole in the top that you can go down into. And Doc found this old wooden ladder made with rope and tree trunks, you know, a a really rustic ladder. When he first put his step foot on the first rung, it broke. So it was so old. First thing I would have thought would happen. So once you go down, it's like these layers of of different, like a ramp, you know, but... um, naturally in this mountain kind of like uh you look at a um an ant colony you know from the side and once he got all the way down to the bottom about 90 feet there was a tunnel that turned left went into the core of the mountain where he found this room and it had giant three to 30 pound gold bars stacked up in, in four big stacks along with a lot of artifacts and all this stuff. And the gold bars were so heavy that doc made a sling cause he had to like slide through just big enough to get your body through. He made a sling where he could carry only one bar of gold up at a time. On oh, that old, Creakety ladder. Well, he created a pulley system, built a new ladder, and the wife would stay outside and pull up the gold bars. Supposedly, he would go to the surrounding area and bury the gold so it's easily accessible. Mm -hmm. It's really close, like right on the border of White Sands Missile Range. The government gets word of it, and they annex the land to take control over the the peak. So Doc loses his gold claim that he had on it. The gov- government seized it. Doc ends up getting murdered. It's a pretty elaborate story. The wife, meanwhile, is still talking and yapping. All these people get involved. The government actually gives them rights to dig. And so they they started digging back in to get access into the mountain and the government kind of sat off to the side and just let all the civilians dig. Mm -hmm. And right when they got to the door up underneath this, they found human bones. They were chiseling through the rock and a femur bone fell down. So they knew that they were in the right plate. Doc said that there was dead people inside Mm -hmm. too. The government stopped to say, oh, you're out of time, sorry. Closed it off. And then, like, in the middle of the night, they see three or four military trucks leaving out of there. So they think the government used the family to get access to the gold, and the government stole the gold. It's just absolutely crazy story. But uh, that's pretty neat. So did we ever find out, like, how old the gold actually was, where it came from, or anything like that? Nope. Because or is this still, oh, we, do we have proof that Doc no, ever found gold? That's the whole thing. When it was all said and done, there was never any true proof that Doc ever found shit. Like, there's pictures of Doc holding, like, this huge gold bar, and there's a photo of it. But it's a black-and-white photo. 
And his wife says, oh, he put a gold bar on the pillow. It was so heavy, I thought it was going to tear the pillowcase, you know. And she says, I couldn't even pick it up off the table. With so there hands. is a picture. There's a photograph. Did you see it? And there's the, yes. And there's the jeweler who said, yep, he brought me a, like, where's this country bumpkin living out in the desert find mm-hmm. a crown? You know, and it's a gold, it was, yeah, it was authentic. So there's that, and Doc would, like, drop trinkets in town every once in a while, these gold crosses and rings, and he'd barter around town with these pieces. So he found something. Was it a mountain full of $28 billion worth of gold bullion? Nobody, only the government knows. But uh, it's a it's a pretty pretty darn neat story. It's called Gold lies and videotape i think it's on netflix check it out it's pretty crazy I'm trying to figure out why there'd be a gold crown in this country it was stolen from or uh, hang on because uh, i don't remember ever a president wearing a gold no crown. no it's from Me- it's mexican gold oh okay yeah so that was the claim Uh, they think it was the treasures from various sources, but one of the main sources was Mexican Emperor Maximilian, Pancho Villa, and possibly some German World War I gold. Uh, but the crown was from a, one of the chests down there, Doc said, had the name Carlotta on it. And Car- the name Carlotta was uh, the... Um, sound like a cartel king of Mexico's the Mexican king's wife's name so that was the tie to that I don't know be pretty cool find some gold be nice have to steal it from the government because it was right next to a top secret base (laughs) so you're going to tunnel under Fort Knox and there's a theory there's no gold in Fort Knox Oh, please do tell. Uh, Is there another conspiracy the theory? theory? You know, no gold in Fort Knox. Yeah. Oh, and that's another part of that story was it was during the time he he found this gold, but it was during the time that uh, they made it illegal for citizens to own gold. Mm-hmm. And so Doc was asking how to. He even contacted the government on how to how to claim the gold and get rid of it. You know, they were just like, well, just tell us where you got all that gold at more. We'll help you get rid of it. Oh, I bet. Yeah. No, never mind. <laughs> they replaced him with the gold. Yeah. They killed Doc. Doc's dead. Damn. All right. We got some other news. What else you got? Yeah. The James Webb telescope may have found aliens. Yep. You're familiar with that new Fandangle telescope they launched a couple of years ago, right? It may have found aliens. So they can analyze the... Oh, so they can actually come right down on the border in between Mexico and Texas? Not those aliens. Oh. Yeah. About to say, I, I, can yeah. See it, I can watch TV and watch those come across. I don't need a telescope. <laughs> and we saw a bunch of aliens on TV yesterday. Anyway, uh, so in July of last year, It found definitive evidence of life beyond Earth. So they found the K218b. It's an exoplanet located in the habitable zone of its star and has been a major focus of the James Webb Space Telescope. It detected the presence of methane and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, two molecules that are associated with biological processes. Additionally, it found the signal... Of dimethyl sulfide. And what is that? Dimethyl sulfide can only, we've only found it on Earth, and it is only produced by living organisms like like phytoplankton and stuff like that. So it's the byproducts of like plankton. So, yep. Life is not only on planet Earth. And of course, this planet is. 100 million light years away 
So by the time so we a tanker see gas the light, is not going to get me there. No, two tanks. So by the time the light waves got here that James Webb telescope saw, there was only plankton. Now those civilizations have evolved and now they're flying spaceships and they're landing here every Wednesday. <laughs> That's how yeah. Pretty interesting. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> oh, gosh. I wish they'd just wheel out those little green men so we can just say, hey, see, there it is. But, uh, you know, I got to see it. Now, do I believe they're, we're the only living organism or being here? Yeah. No, we can't be. But I don't think they've traveled all the way over to this little portal at uh, make ground. Yeah. So the people that in are in the know, they say that what, what we're actually experiencing and the aliens that are coming here, it's actually more, it's actually more spiritual and it's more of interdimensional than it is an alien on the other side of the galaxy getting in a craft and flying all the way over to here or utilizing a wormhole to get here. That's it's actually more interdimensional. So to bring it into layman's terms, we're to kind of it, like a rest area on our way somewhere else. Yeah. Well, to bring it into layman's terms. So think of the, um, the membrane theory and, in theoretical phys physics that er everything is different dimensions or just membranes and you're vibrating at a circuit certain frequency here and we see in the third dimension but there's actually 12 or 14 different dimensions of space and time and by vibrating or being at a different frequency, a doorway can open and you can step into a different. And that's what these craft do. These craft are actually interdimensional vehicles. And that's why they always look fuzzy. They move erratically because they're actually popping in and out of our existence. And that's why... They're here and then they're gone because they actually just enter into our third dimension and pull out of our third dimension at the blink of an eye. They're actually not moving and traveling. So what you're telling me is we're an intergalactic porta potty. They're just here to use yeah. the restroom and keep going. Right. So like think of a two plane. All right, we're gonna have a little physics here. All right. <laughs> So I you're like my intergalactic porta potty. You're, <laughs> I mean, you're, they're in and out, dude. It's like a door. Doop, shh, yeah, you, you're you're an ant living on a two dimensional plane. You have length and you have width, mm -hmm. but you don't have height, right? So here comes a three dimensional object coming into your two dimensional plane. You can't see this pin because you live on a two dimensional, you have no y axis. You only have. You have no Z axis. You have you only have X and Y. So as the pin comes down and touches into your two dimensional space, you don't see the whole pin. All you see is a dot because you only see where the pin has touched your two dimensional plane. So you would be walking around and all of a sudden a black circle would pop up in front of you. And you would be like, what is that large black circle? Because you can't see into the next dimension. And as the plane, as the, in our case, a fourth dimensional object was to remove itself from our plane, we would just see it shrink and just disappear when there's actually some object that has entered in our plane, but we can't see it. Well, I was just thinking a little black hole was more like I should have stopped at three bourbons instead of four. This has been theoretical physicist Billy Skipper coming to you from the Mr. Bourbon Talk podcast. Hope you enjoyed that class. Ooh. <laughs> Not only is it informational, it's educational. There you go.
Wow. You, you ever heard of the Mandela effect? Uh, actually, I have. Yeah. Things that you remember that actually were not right. true. So the Mandela effect all started where people think they have a clear recollection of Nelson Mandela dying in prison. Like they even claim they remember the article in the paper. You and I, you remember him as being in prison and getting out, right? Mm -hmm. So that means we're on that plane of existence. It's not three-dimensional, is it? So they actually think that there's different timelines. And these people have come into existence on our timeline, and they remain the, they remember the Bernstein Bears, not the Berenstein Bears. Mm-hmm. Um, so picture in your head the Monopoly man. Mm-hmm. Did he have a monocle in his eye? Mm-mm. Mr. Peanut did. Mr. Peanut did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I remember him having a monocle glass. But a lot of people said, oh, they're just getting that confused with the peanut guy. And there's tons of stuff like C-3PO being all gold. How do you remember C-3PO? Was he all gold? In the original Star Wars, I believe he was. But again. Yeah, in in episode three, Star Wars, the first movie you saw was CP-3 all gold. He was all gold. From what I remember, yes. He's never been all gold. Well, of course not, yeah, because so now you're going to bring him in. <laughs> yeah, his right leg is silver from the knee down. I don't remember that. I don't know about you. I'm from the all gold. Yeah, I thought C-3PO it was all gold. I mean, timeline. it's like, but I mean, what was uh, like later on some of the newer Star Wars? I mean, he's like kind of rebuilt because like different parts on him. But the oh, original Star Wars. Yeah, remember the one episode where he's in Chewie's backpack and he's yeah, all Yeah, exactly. Up? He's got like half, just yeah, his torso. They might have used a spare leg. Yeah, uh, no, but be, I, but I mean the original Star Wars, I I remember him being, being all, all gold. gold yeah. Supposedly they say he's always had one silver leg. Uh, the spelling of Looney Tunes. Is it spelled T O O N S or T U N S? There are people on this planet. Nope, I remember it being spelled this way. So when I was growing up, the Fruit of the Loom logo had fruit. And the horn, the cornucopia. Yeah. Because I never knew, and I know this is a fact, it was that logo that taught me what the word cornucopia was. Mm -hmm. I never knew what a weird corn-shaped basket that held fruit was. So I remember asking my grandmother, what's that thing? And she told me it's called a cornucopia. So I know for a fact the Fruit of the Loom logo used to be fruit with the cornucopia. You can call Fruit of the Loom on the phone right now. No, we've never had a cornucopia in our logo. You can go back through all the patents of the logo. It has never had one. There has never been a cornucopia in the Fruit of the Loom logo. Well, I got to say that I really haven't inspected my underwear that close. Um, but I thought it had the corner coat. What, what did? So what did have it? Nothing. That is something that they will tell us that we have just fabricated out of our own mind. So the theory is, is that we are from a certain time timeline. And we have now merged into this alternate reality where Fruit of the Loom doesn't have one. Exactly. You remember Curious George the Monkey, right? Yes. Did he have a tail? No. So you're from the no tail Curious George timeline. Right. Hmm. Must be where we split off. Little fucker had a tail when I was growing up. (laughs) So did he have a tail or not? He's never had a tail. No, that's what I thought. I mean, I remember the book. He did when I was growing up. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> I can show you a movie. Okay. From oh. that, that, um, the hell was that dipshit comedian? Um, They're all dipshits. No, oh man, what the hell's his name? I don't know. 
uh, Sinbad. Sinbad, the yeah. sailor. Yeah, you remember the the genie movie that he made? No. Yeah. <laughs> I made don't. a movie called Shazam. No, so I don't remember. Yeah, he doesn't either. <laughs> There's people on the internet that's got the damn VHF videotape. He's like, I've never made that movie. And now uh, I've got a video of him saying, saying this. And I'm sure there's parts of the 80s that Sinbad does not yeah. remember. <laughs> I just want to say um, I'm embarrassed because I've been telling people I never did Shazam and people always walk up on me and I'm, I'm just going to tell you what happened. <laughs> I did do Shazam. I'm not. I'm not proud of it. When I did Shazam, I was doing a lot of crack. I was staying in crack houses, and I did Shazam for crack money. I, I knew it wasn't going to be a great movie because I have no genie skills. I think most movies you have to bring something out of yourself, and I've never been a genie or had magical powers. It was a learning process for me as I was doing this movie, just getting into the lamp. I took a lot of yoga, uh, a lot of Crisco oil to slide up into that lamp. So, you know, I injured myself. I had a rotator cuff injury, but you know, I'm not crying. I'm not crying because I'm tough. For those who said, hey, you saw Suzanne when I was growing up. Yeah, you you did. You it, it, it did exist. It took a lot of government intervention to get those videos out of people's homes and out of the uh, video stores. Um, I'm lucky because I'm ex-military, ex-special forces. So we were able to do a lot of mind control stuff to get those videotapes away from people. There's three tapes left. There are three Shazam videos still out that we did not find. And if we find you, we're gonna kill you. And I just want you to know that. Um, I want you to be aware of that because I felt bad that that you didn't know you're on a hit list. And I'm, I'm ashamed. I'm totally ashamed of that. But I'm just saying, if you have that Shazam video, you're on a short list to have an assassin come to your house. So I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not saying, hey, if you want to post it on, on Twitter or something, say, hey, I got the video. But that means your whole family's gone. And I'm just trying to put that out there because I, I feel bad because of my weakness not admitting that I did Shazam when I was in a bad plot space in my life. I was in a bad place in my life. And I just want to tell people it gets better. It gets better. All right? You hang in there. I, you know, I want to, say, I want to kind of add on to that a little bit he's never done a good movie so he is still <laughs> on crack i mean the guy has got to be one of the worst actors ever i, I mean he, <laughs> he he was horrible he's still horrible i mean he still must be living in crack houses i haven't i haven't did he actually have a drug problem i don't know I don't know, but I'm thinking he must because he. I haven't. I haven't he is that's horrible. How did he even make money? That's a dude you have not heard from in a long time. But well, yeah, because he's still in, <laughs> trying to find terrible. find Hollywood. He's on crack. I mean, the guy has literally done a movie worth of crap. I mean, oh my god, <laughs> pretty interesting. All right, horrible. Let's actor. see. Let's go to another thing of the. Mandela effect. Let's see. What was the famous line from Casablanca? Play it again, it, Sam. Play it again, Sam. She never said that. That's what I remember. Play well, it again, I, Sam. You know what the line actually is in the movie? Play it once, Sam, for old time's sake. Oh, nice. really? I don't. That's not the movie I remember. I remember. Uh, I remember that. What's the famous line that Darth Vader said to Luke? Um, Luke, I am your father. You and I come from the same timeline. That's what I remember Darth Vader saying. Well, I mean, too. that was the same time C CP three O was all gold. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Anyway, Darth Vader actually said, no, I am your father. Don't remember that. No. But anyway, feel free to dive down your old, your own Mandela effect timeline. And send us some uh, examples of. Send us some of yours. If you've got, like I've got underwear older than my children. If you've got a t-shirt, pull back the tag. Look at it. If you've got a Fruit of the Loom t-shirt. 
with a cornucopia in the logo. Send us a fi- picture of it. They are out there. There's a few people. She opens up her drawer, pulls out the T-shirt, and looks, and it's got one on it. But if you call Fruit of the Loom, we've our logo's never changed. It's always just been the fruit. If you look up patents for the logo, Fruit of the Loom has never had a cornucopia. And I, that tells me right there. Yep. Maybe so, it's a knockoff company. So they have theories that the Mandela effect is actually a large psyop on the American people to see how easily they can remove this bottle. They can remove history. Mm. Well, George Soros is trying to do that. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, he's literally trying to rewrite laws and take down statues and, yeah, yeah, disrupt history. But, hey, you know, I kind of got my own Mandela thing going on. And and I'm I'm hoping it's a Mandela effect, Mandela effect, and that that for some reason I'm thinking that Joe Biden won the, the presidential election, but that cannot be true. (laughs) <laughs> anyways it's true it's true oh shit <laughs> nightmare <clears throat> hi right, buddy you want to rate this well hang on yeah. one more topic here for oh, you, you close you, out you man got something else awesome yeah and you're gonna it's the extended version episode yeah, 50 special so I'll give edition. you an, it gives you another short dee, 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 dee. so uh your 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 favorite movie, my favorite movie. Your favorite movie. Are you talking about Top Gun Maverick? I am. Good grief, the Admiral. Uh, uh, uh John Ham. John Ham. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. He is out raising money for Adam Schiff's Senate run. Well, shit. I know, right? It's like, oh my god. Damn, John. So, and let me let me Can't get watch this. that movie no more now. So, I think John Hamm's a great actor too. That's he. Hey, he is actually he is actually putting out commercials and everything else, saying the that former President Trump's possible reelection could put the country in peril and hailed Adam Schiff for holding on for accountable while in Congress during his push, the Russian collusion hoax. Over the years, I've watched Adam do the important work to investigate Trump, lead the impeachment trial, and hold his feet to the fire for the January 6th insurrection. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to have to go burn my... Maverick movie. That's just, hey, teach their own. Yeah. All right, buddy. You ready to rate this bourbon? I think so. Yeah, How about you? Do, do you really want to try? Yeah. Let's Here, let me hold this, this bottle up just to show everybody what it is. And again, it is Doc Swenson. There's a reason I'm holding it because we had some more technical issues. So this is take two on the. Podcast and um, all right, sir. All right, go ahead, buddy. What do you got? All right, for uh, Doc. Hey, uh, you know what? A good flavor had, had some flavor coming right out of the gate, though. I mean, I saw you better. Oh, yeah. It- Packs a punch. And it packs a punch, <laughs> and it's a it's a little little strong coming out of the gate there. I'm not gonna lie. Um, overall, uh, good. I, I don't know the price. If you wanna look the price up on this thing real fast, um, Doc Swenson. So, and again, we're supposed to be letting people know what the price range in on this. Thing yeah, we is. do that now. Yeah, and it's uh, a new thing we do. A new thing. So this is a seventy-five dollar bottle of bourbon, seventy-five to eighty dollar bottle. Wow. Yep. And that's uh, so. You know what? I actually kind of agree with my my grade then. 
So uh, for seventy five dollars, again, it came it came out really strong, and uh, I'm going to give it a four point five. I think for seventy five dollars, it should have had uh, maybe not such a strong taste coming out of it right away. Maybe it should have been a little smoother. But uh, for seventy five dollars, I'd like something a little smoother where I'm not choking. But I'm gonna give it a four point five. Yep, I'm gonna follow that four point five up with a four. It is not an easy drink. No, I'll, I'll say that <clears throat> it uh it caught me a little off guard. Again, I'm pretty new to the bourbon world, so y'all laugh and make fun of me all you want. Still makes me choke up every once in a while but anyway uh a set of jalapenos yeah that that hits a little rough it uh it's got a i'll say a standard basic oak barrel bourbon taste there's no kind of fluff or flowers or any kind of accents going in there that i can taste or chocolates or oranges or nothing it's just straight bourbon and it it uh hits hard but uh it's a again about an 80 dollar bottle jimmy gives it a four and a half i give it a four that's an average of 4.25 and grab yourself a bottle and see what you think about doc swenson's bourbon I appreciate it, Billy, and uh, thanks to everyone out there listening, you know, both of you. and uh, yeah, all two of you. All two of you. <laughs> and with that, hey, Billy, it's been a pleasure. As always, man, had a blast making it with you, brother, and uh, we'll see everybody out there next time out here. Out.